Hello friends out there in YouTube land or however you found my video. I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography and I want to welcome you. I'd like to talk a little bit today about neutral density filters, about leaf shutters, and about wide apertures such as like an f2 or an f1.8. And I'd like to share with you a camera that's got all those things put together, the Fuji X100 series. This is a very important camera. Fujifilm developed it a long time ago and it's still going strong. Yet today, many people don't understand exactly what its capabilities are. I hope that you find this video helpful. If you do, don't forget to leave a like and a subscribe. Guys, I live on your comments. I want some. I want some interaction. So please feel free to sound off in the comments down below. I just got through writing almost 3,000 words on the Fuji X100 series camera. And it started off by people talking with me online through the different forums about the X, uh, TXL X100, this 50 millimeter converter lens for the X100 series camera. And many people don't understand what the purpose of this, this lens is. It, it, you get a small premium compact camera like the Fuji X100, something small like this. You add a lens to it, you pop a flash on it, and then next thing you know, you've got this big honking thing instead of this much smaller pocketable kind of camera. And my response to that is if this camera was a camera you were buying just because it was small and pocketable, then I think you missed the boat. I think you missed out on the actual purpose of the camera. And that that's kind of like a common theme. People don't really understand what this X100 series camera does. And let me illustrate that for you. First of all, it's got a leaf shutter. Now I've talked about this in other videos, but for you, the inquiring few that want to know, a leaf shutter allows for higher flash synchronization speed by opening and closing like an iris, okay? Remember Johnny Five from Short Circuit? Think about his eyes. They opened and closed like an iris, okay? They, that's exactly what they did, much like the aperture of your lens. What this means is that you can synchronize your flash at your widest aperture much faster than a focal plane shutter. Focal plane shutters go left to right usually. Sometimes they go up and down. Why that's important is because the flash that you're using, all flash, their timing, how they fire, are rated in something like a T1 time, like 1, 10, or 20 thousandth of a second. Different flash have different T1 times. And what that means is how long it takes the flash to actually get at its brightest complete exposure that's consistent all the way through its output. On a focal plane camera, if your shutter isn't slow enough, it will create banding which you can see, the top illuminated by flash, a bottom not illuminated, much darker. And that's what happens. In order for the flash to sync with a focal plane shutter, the shutter has to be slow enough that the flash can come to full illumination while the shutter's open, before the second curtain closes. There's two curtains on your shutter. The first curtain which opens, the second curtain which closes. And they usually go back and forth or reset, just depending. A leaf shutter doesn't worry about that. A leaf shutter actually opens and closes as a whole, from open like a sphincter muscle, like, like, like a circular muscle. It opens like this and then it closes down, like pulling the drawstring on a corded bag. It closes down together and then it reopens, click, like that. So the flash doesn't require any specific, um, anything special because it's not that a part of the image is being exposed and the other part is not, like with a focal plane where you're opening and closing. Here, the entire image is exposed because there's no shutter that's running across the frame. In fact, the frame is open. The flash can fire and then this frame can close and open again to reset itself. That's what's happening with a, uh, a, a leaf shutter. That's why it's important. Generally speaking, a leaf shutter, like on the Fuji F, uh, X100 series, has a maximum aperture of, of course, f2, and it can sync at 1 1,000th of a second. That's important to know, because your Canon camera might sync at 1 250th of a second. So the leaf shutter on the Fuji X100 series camera is two times as fast as the, camera, as the Canon shutter would be at 1 250th. Most cameras have a shutter speed anywhere between 1 1 25th and 1 uh, 250th of a max synchronization speed for the uh, focal length for the focal plane shutter. And that means that, generally speaking, the X100 series camera with its leaf shutter focuses and uh, not focuses, can synchronize with the flash 
two to three times faster than most cameras that are on focal plane shutters on the market. There are things such as high-speed sync, but that lowers flash output by pulsing the flash multiple times during the opening of the shutter. And it requires quite a bit of extra machinery and, and synchronization electronics through the flash mechanism and the camera body. So guess what? It's more expensive. The easiest and best way to do it is just to have a beautiful leaf shutter built in. Now, you can actually sync all the way up to your fastest uh, shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second at f8 or beyond. You can get 1 2,000th of a second at f2 and then at 1 1,000th of a second at f um, I said f2 earlier, I meant f4, 1 1,000th of a second at f2 on the Fuji. So that's important. That means that you can go out and you can shoot with existing flash on the camera in brighter conditions so that you can balance your light better. But Fuji went a little bit step further. Fuji added a neutral density filter. That's a three-stop neutral density filter. Think of that as like sunglasses for your camera lens. What this allows the camera to do is increase uh, saturation and contrast by gating the light entering the camera. This is a global change to the camera. If you move your shutter speed, you expect, you're actually just affecting ISO and aperture. If you move your aperture, you're affecting shutter speed and ISO. If you move your ISO, you're affecting uh, aperture and shutter speed. However, adding a neutral density filter, whether it's to the X100S or to any lens, is going to globally change the light that's hitting the actual sensor. It's going to change it as a whole. This allows you to make incident light changes for like flash. It allows you to expose for the sunlight which would have your uh, sunlight and sky, which could have your model or your subject in total darkness, and then bring in incident light for exposure of your model, which allows you to balance light during the day with the sun in the sky and still have this beautifully exposed skies and this perfectly balanced, uh, color balanced and exposed models. That's what the neutral density filter gives you the ability to do. But you have to know how to use it. You have to understand when to use it and when not to use it, and you have to understand how to imp uh, implement it. The other thing that we've got going on here within the X100 series is that beautiful 23mm f2 lens. Now, this is a crop sensor camera, okay? It's the Fuji X-Trans sensor. Uh, it's, it's a 16 megapixel sensor camera, uh, that, which is important. It probably resolves, according to DP review, because it's a, a different than a bare arrangement, which many of you guys don't even know about, so check my article about that. But it doesn't use an anti-aliasing filter. There's, it has very little to no more, and that's because of the sensor. And it performs much higher than its weight class as far as megapixels. But the most important part about that, that sensor has a crop factor. Okay? And the crop factor, as you know, is kind of applied or is a standard applied from film days. Right? So film, 35 millimeter film is a standard that we apply crop factors to in order to kind of understand you know, lenses and film speeds. So, and apertures. So what that means to us is this. At a 1.5 times crop factor, that means that if I've got a 23 millimeter lens times 1.5, I'm right at 35 millimeters. It's actually 33 and some change, but I'm about 35 millimeters in a 35 millimeter equivalent, which means that when Fuji designed this camera with the in-body lens, the F2 was more like an F3, 2 times 1.5 is 3, and the 23 millimeter was more like an equivalent to 35. So Fuji built this camera around a full frame equivalent of a 35 millimeter f2.8. Now, I said f3 for the lens, we're less than one sixth of a stop off in the aperture at f3 to f2.8. So we can very easily see that Fuji's mindset here and their inspiration was a small, compact, rangefinder like camera that was able to render beautifully defocused backgrounds. In the full frame category, we're talking a 35 millimeter f2.8. So Fuji produced this 23 millimeter f2 in APS-C equivalency in order to bring that into line. And that's really great. By the time that you add the neutral density filter to this camera and this lens and the leaf shutter, you've got a very powerful one-stop tool, right, to get out there and produce amazing portraiture. Whether it's with an on-camera flash such as this uh, EFX 20, which is great, or whether it's off-camera lighting, you're going to still be able to sync and not have to worry about special adapters and high-speed sync mechanisms. I can throw a flash on here. I can throw an adapter. I use the Yongyo Series flashes. I use the Yongyo Series TX adapter. I use the 560 Series 4. I use the Yongyo 560 Series TX. I can control eight different flash. I can put all these strobes up. And this one little 23 millimeter lens, 35 millimeter equivalent, gives me the ability to flash and fire and sync with those things all the way up to a one eight thousandth of a second equivalency.
Yeah, I said it. How did I get there? Here's how I got there. At F2, at 1 1,000th of a second, plus a three-stop ND filter, let's count them. 1 1,000th is my physical shutter speed that I'm using at F2. I'm using a three-stop neutral density filter from F2 at 1 1,000th. So the next one is 1 2,000th. The next one is 1 4,000th. The final one is 1 1 8,000th. So in a condition where I would need to shoot with a mechanical shutter of 1 8,000th of a second and an at F2, I can engage my neutral density filter and fire with this Fuji X100S or any of the X100 series cameras with a mechanical shutter at f2 at 1 1,000th of a second. And that's made possible to the neutral density filter. And that's built into the camera. You see, I don't have to add anything to this, right? The TXL, this converter right here, is part which allows the system to get even better, you see? Because as it stands, the mechanical limitations of this camera are 23 millimeters, which is a 35 millimeter equivalent. However, if we talk in 35 millimeter equivalents, if I add the wide conversion lens, this camera is now a 24 millimeter f2. Or uh, 20, if we're gonna, we're gonna talk in 35 millimeter equivalents. There's a 24 millimeter f2.8. As it stands, if you add the, uh, with the standard lens, it's a uh, 35 millimeter f2.8 in full frame equivalency. You add the teleconversion lens right here and it's a 50 millimeter f2.8. And that is something that you just aren't gonna find in any other camera that's out there. If you can, if you have a DSLR, an interchangeable lens camera that can do this with a leaf shutter, with a built-in neutral density filter, please sound off in the comments below. You won't find one because leaf shutters are built into the lenses and interchangeable lens cameras were built on a completely different design. So here, the idea was to determine and share with you what makes the X100 series so special. Many people don't recognize what this camera actually has to offer, even pros in the field. I hope that through this, you have been able to determine yourself. We've got an excellent camera with an excellent set of specs. I want you to get out there and shoot. And as always, keep shooting, my friends. I'm Robert Ham with RobertHamPhotography.com. Catch me on the flip side at Rob Ham Photo, either on Twitter or Instagram.